Uh, still good morning, before noon. Thank you all for being here. A year ago this week, our country went into lockdown. But we went right to work. Over the last past year, Congress has passed five relief bills to get Americans back on their feet. Each one of them was bipartisan. This week, Congress passed the sixth. It is the largest single spending bill in history. And the only bipartisan vote was the vote against the bill. Not one Republican voted for it. The question is why. This isn't about the virus. As you know, less than 9% is used to defeat the virus. It doesn't prior prioritize school openings. Most of the money for schools doesn't even go out till 2023. It pays, more, pays people more to stay home than go back to work. It includes hundreds of billions in state bailouts, when as the Wall Street Journal reported just last night, despite the pandemic's crushing toll on the U.S. economy, total state revenues were roughly flat in 2020 from the year before. This isn't a relief bill. It's pretty much a payoff for Pelosi's political allies, and it will be the American people paying the bill. And as Pelosi and Biden try to convince the nation otherwise, the same three real priorities remain. We need to reopen every school in America. Science knows it's safe, and parents want it to happen. We need to get 10 million Americans back to work, and the vaccine efforts created by Operation Warp Speed, which will administer 100 million vaccines, needs to keep moving forward. Vaccinate the country and restore our way of life. A focus like that would allow the administration to do the right thing, while at the same time doing the other things that it's responsible for, such as securing our border. Many of you know, last week I sent President Biden a letter asking for a meeting to talk about the crisis along the border. I still have not had a response. But even President Biden's own Secretary of State, Blinken, said yesterday, strong borders are fundamental to our nation's security. And it's not just in America that knows it's a crisis outside of the White House, even the president of Mexico. He said that people coming to the border see Biden as the migrant president, the encouragement of making it happen. I couldn't agree more. That is why we must address this crisis at the border that is spiraling out of control and is entirely caused by the actions of this administration. In February alone, there were more than 100,000 migrants encounters, a seven-year high and 173% increase from the same time last year. Let's put that in perspective. In one month, 100,000. Those are the ones we encountered, not the ones that got through that people did not see. What does that equate to? Joe Biden's hometown is Scranton, Pennsylvania. 100,000 is a higher population than Scranton in one month. Health and Human Services reported they are taking in 321 children a day, up from the weekly average of 203 just a few weeks ago. As I said, last week I sent the letter requesting a meeting to talk about the crisis. Haven't heard back. The American people also haven't gotten an update since it's been 50 days since the president has held a press conference. So on Monday, I'm going to the border. I'm taking 12 members with me um, from the committees of jurisdiction, looking for, our, looking for ourselves, working on trying to find a solution. But we know the solution is quite easy because most of this is all caused by Biden's action just in a short time frame. And don't take my word for it. The other thing we've been doing prior to going to the border is talking to people down along the border. A rancher named Russell who lives in New Mexico doesn't allow his children to play outside unsupervised anymore because Biden left nearly a mile-long gap of the border wall on its property. Just about every one of the houses in his community has been broken into. Not only that, the cattle are getting sick from the stress of hundreds of people crossing by them every day. The cattle wander out through the broken fences to Mexico. Mexican cattle ranchers wander in sometime, bringing the diseases and destroying his livelihood. We spoke to the mayor of Uvalde, Mayor Don McLaughlin who said the facilities down there are so packed, Border Patrol is left to just release migrants into the middle of the town. There's a car chase now just about every single day. Just this Sunday, they had a head-on crash during one of the pursuits. The migrants are sometimes armed. 
In the last two weeks, they've had to shut down the schools because armed migrants are out. In January, multiple officers were shot at. That's just this community. And a member of the Texas Farm Bureau told us on an acquaintance on his southern Arizona was just forced to move off his ranch because his six-year-old daughter was missing. They followed tracks south of the ranch until they found her sitting alone barefoot, miles away from their house after Border Patrol tracked down the group. One common theme here is this is not a political issue anymore. It's becoming a national security concern. That's why I sent a letter to work with the president on the crisis he created along the border, just for a meeting. He hasn't even acknowledged the crisis he created, let no one set a time to meet to solve it. With that, let's open it up for questions. Yes, sir. Um, I wonder if uh, House Republican leadership anticipated Marjorie Taylor Greene's uh, motion to adjourn yesterday, and if you have any thoughts on a statement she put out after uh, 40 Republicans voted against it, slamming them as the 40 white flags of the Surrender Caucus and accusing them of working with Democrats to destroy America. We, we can always think Marjorie's going to do that. Um, they kicked her off all committees. That's the only committee she has. Uh, every member has a right to make the motion. Um, people have disagreements on the strategy and what's best to use. But there's a frustration on the floor, not just with Marjorie, not just with Republicans. I sat with a Democrat today to talk about policies, and she's very frustrated with the wall around the Capitol. You know, a lot of people say, are you going to the border to, to look at the wall? No, I could look right outside my window. The frustration of taking away the minority's right for a motion to recommit. It's been more than 100 years. The idea that now we, we sit where members, do they even come up and show for work because of proxies? Committee staff and committee work, is it even produced? A schedule that's never kept to, that you, could pro that you think you're going to have a district work period, and the next day they say, no, we're taking that back. Bills that come to the floor that never have a say in your own committee but affect your district. Yeah, there's frustration all around. So did we expect it? Yeah, I expect others to do the same, probably on the Democrat side as well. This is probably the poorest run Congress in the history of Congress. It's the least effective Congress in the history of Congress. The only one worse was the Congress before it. Yes, sir. The COVID relief bill, 75 percent in most polls. I'm curious your thoughts on that. And um, what are what is, in your estimation, th three quarters of the country missing? Well, I don't know that they've read the bill. I don't know if they know what's in it. I think when they find out that less than 9 percent of it goes to COVID, but in San Francisco, that has a $650 million deficit, the city, 92% of their deficit will be taken care of. And they won't have to wait to 2023 like the schools have to to get their money. They'll get their money now. So if you're part of the swamp, it's pretty positive. If you're a federal employee, you'll get 21000 But if you're in the private sector, if your kids have been out of work, you're not going to get anything. If you're a state employee, they added it up. If you come in here illegally, you're going to have assistance when it comes to your health care. So I think as people read this, they're going to find out no. And I think if there's a correlation to it, I'd go back to, what is it, January 28, 2009. There were some same people at the White House that were in that administration that thought a stimulus bill was really going to turn the country around. It had about the exact same approval rating. A month later, it dropped 12 points. By the time November came around, more people thought Elvis was alive than the stimulus created a job. Why? Because they wrote the bill the exact same way. They rewarded their political friends instead of solving a problem. How do you call it a COVID bill when less than 9% and you make it the single largest? Does it put, I mean, every time we've been able to do a bipartisan bill, what has changed? Administration. And now it's going to be singly one way you know every time that happens, whatever piece of legislation is made probably has some problems in it. And the only bipartisan vote here was against it. Yes, sir. Can I sure. You laid out some of the goals that you want to see, schools reopening, jobs coming back. Mm -hmm. I think even total skeptics look at the improving environment around the virus and think a lot of that stuff is, is going to happen. 
But do you worry that by voting no on this last bill, like the only people who can't take credit for that will be Republican lawmakers? No, we, we just passed five bills, and you just laid it out from the very beginning. Look how strong the economy is right now when people didn't think it would be. So you know the PPP program we created? Pretty good program, was it not? Providing the ability to get one. These states, when people thought they were going to have a lot less revenue, we just found out they don't. So why would you change the revenue function of how you provide money to the states simply based upon whether they're blue or red? Well, you're partisan. Look, you're asking a question, should we vote on things because we think they're politically positive or should we vote on things that are good policy? I think good policy makes good politics. I think it's the exact same thing I saw in 2009. I'll see now. Yes. Um, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene was mentioned as far as slowing down some of the legislation on the floor, but I know that uh, Chip Roy also uh, threatened to uh, have the uh, suspension of bills, uh, have to be a roll call vote for each of those bills. And you mentioned other members are also thinking about doing the same thing. Is there some type of negotiation going on with Mr. Hoyer to perhaps deal with the MTRs, deal with perhaps having these these, these are, Look, I had a negotiation like with uh, Mr. Hoyer prior to us being sworn in, telling him, if you remove a motion to recommit, you're denying constituents across the country from having a voice, something no Congress has ever done. We've never even thought of that when we were in the majority. You're taking away an ability for somebody to have one amendment on a bill, that there'd be problems in the future. There, these are procedural items that every member has a right to do. I think you kind of miscal um, miscalculated what Chip Roy was actually doing. He wanted a roll call vote on one of the bills. I think people thought it was overall. If you followed that night, there was a UC to move one of those bills, the VETS bills, through with no objection. So, yeah. Yes. A question on Iran. Um, many of your members have been trying to pass legislation to restrict the ability of President Biden to re-enter the Iran deal the way it is. Uh, where do you see any of those bills going now that Democrats control, um, control the House? Well, I hope they would put the policy or people before politics and actually look at it. Do they really want Iran back in exactly as they had it? Um, I don't think the world is safe. I think what's happened in the last administration, the Middle East became more safe. Uh, now with this new administration, a short amount of time, our borders are unsafe. Iran is doing naval maneuvers with Moscow, sending missiles into Iraq. Our gasoline price goes up by the day. No one thought it'd be this much pain in such short amount of time, but that's what happens when you have bad decisions. I'd hopeful that the Democrats would look and join with us and make America stronger and the world safer. Thank you all. Have a good weekend. Thank you.